Hi, uh, my name is Bertie Ashley. I am a molecular biologist and uh, I usually work with really small things like, you know, genes and uh, DNA. But that doesn't stop me from wondering about big things and uh, it doesn't get much bigger than stars. It's always been something which has been fascinating humankind forever. It's the very first time that humans as a species got around and were formed into a society. That is when they started following the stars, they started following the sky and instructions from it. They realized that the passage of time is dictated by what's happening in the heavens. In the olden days, if you were to go through manuscripts, if you were to go through even cave paintings, there is always mention about stars. Because that is how they used to show that the seasons have moved by the passage of stars. And calendars over the course of time have always been to do with rotation of heavenly bodies. We keep forgetting that the sun is a star. For a star, the entire concept of time does not exist. Because time as such is such a fleeting instant that we are going through compared to what a star is going through. Now just take a moment and look up to the sky. You will see some star unless it's cloudy and fogged over. But every single star that you see out there, the light that comes from the star hits the back of your retina and forms an image on your head. That is caused because of a photon that has traveled through that distance. A billion years of existence of one photon of light and you are at the receiving end of it. We, we do not understand how amazing this is. We believe that there are 120 elements right now according to the periodic table. But in essence, there were only two, hydrogen and helium. After the Big Bang, we had huge masses of matter going all over the place, lots of energy and big clumps of energy coming together and forming different planetary bodies and one of them was stars to form any element which was more than nine or eight in atomic number you need to have so much energy you can't form carbon on earth unless it was in the heart of a dying star hi my name is Johan Nishant and I am an astrophotographer so what is astrophotography in simple terms astrophotography is photographing the sky either during the day or at night. It was about three years back when I was on the internet and I saw a photo of the Andromeda Galaxy. Immediately, I thought it was taken by either the Hubble Space Telescope or some kind of observatory. But after reading the details, I realized it was taken by an amateur. And I was shocked. I never knew you could take images like that with such simple equipment. And after reading up a bit, thus began my journey of astrophotography. Comets are quite common, but bright comets are quite rare. And this photo of the comet Lovejoy, which visited us during winter of 2014, is one of my favorites. Mercury's chain in the constellation Virgo. In this image, you will see about 50 galaxies looking back at you. And each one of these galaxies contains around 400 billion stars. So imagine how much life can be out there. The Sagittarius arm of the Milky Way, which rises in summer. Orion Nebula. And this is literally the most photographed object by amateurs across the world. Because it's quite easy to image, but quite hard to get right. Undoubtedly, my most favorite is that of the Andromeda Galaxy. The Andromeda Galaxy is a spiral galaxy located 2.5 million light years away. And the coolest part about it is, it appears really, really big in the night sky. It appears as big as six full moons. 